Hello guys and welcome to what I believe should be your seventh Blitz 3D tutorial. So as you can see here, I have deleted most of the code from the previous tutorial and I am ready to start with our new topic, uh, collisions. So uh, we need actually two objects to actually establish collisions between them, so let's go ahead and create these two objects. Now as you can see, I am using the bottle test file here, which is in the same folder as our bottle.3ds file. Uh, so that that 3D model of the bottle that we created. So let's have that as one of our objects. Let's simply uh, create a variable named bottle and set it equal to load mesh uh, from the, the bottle.3ds file, which is once again located in the same uh, folder or directory. And let's go ahead and use the position entity command on this bottle to position it at 0, 0, 0,0,5 on the z-axis. And of course, let's uh, scale it down because uh, I hope you guys remember why we need to do that is because it still appears uh, much larger than we want it to be on in Blitz 3D. So we're just gonna we're just gonna scale it down uh, by one tenth on each of its axes, and we're also going to give it some color by using the entity color command and specify our our RGB values uh, zero on the red, maximum on the green, and zero on the blue. So it's going to be completely green. All right, let's go ahead and create our second object that we are going to interact with, and that should be our cube. We're just going to set that equal to create cube, uh, and let's just position it, position entity cube, just slightly to the left of our bottle. So there we go. Now that we've actually defined these two objects, how is it, you might ask, do we actually create collisions between them. Well, to actually do this, we need to establish their types first, or we need to assign a certain type to a certain bottle, because the collision command only works, uh, only establishes collisions between two certain types. So let's just go here to the very beginning of our program, and let's uh, create a variable, let's call it called type underscore bottle, and set it equal to one, and one is just a numerical constant, uh, it's going to be set equal to, it's just a numerical, uh, it's a number that that the type underscore bottle represents, and type underscore uh, cube will be equal to two. They just have to be different numbers. That's really the the key here. And uh, we have to assign these types now to our objects by using the entity type command. There we go. Entity type bottle, comma, the actual type of the bottle, which is type underscore bottle, as we can see here. And we actually need to do the same thing for our cube. Let's just copy this statement and paste it right here uh, and assign it to type underscore cube. Alright, now that we've actually assigned these two types to these two different objects, uh, let's go ahead and establish collisions between these types so uh, our objects will collide in our code, in our game, or you know, our mini test here. Can't really call it a game, so uh, if we hit F5 right now just to test this program, uh, we go ahead and hit F5 and uh, here's our bottle, here's our cube, and if we move the bottle, uh, if we, oh wait, wait a sec, wait a sec, wait a sec, alright, our, our camera controls, uh, alright, we just need to change these to control our bottle instead of our camera, so let's just go ahead and do that quick, no biggie, no biggie, and once we have done that, we should once again hit F5, and let's see how it works. We have our bottle and our cube, and the bottle can clearly pass through this cube uh, with really nothing stopping it. Well, with collisions, this will not happen. And we can actually create a collision here, now that we've actually assigned our types, by going down into our while loop and typing collisions, like so. And after this, we have to put the original type that's actually moving around and that would be our bottle type that's moving and the object that is res that is going to have to you know uh, that it's going to collide with is going to be our type underscore cube object uh, which points to our cube and after that we have a two comma two now i will explain what these arguments are later most likely in the next tutorial because there's a lot to explain with them but so far just know that these are arguments that define our collision all right so now before actually running the program we need to carefully, very carefully, after this render world command, put the uh, command update world. Now this is a step that's very easy to miss, and our render world actually draws uh, from the back buffer to the front buffer, but this update world uh, actually checks for all collisions and uh, just makes sh make sure that uh, 
everything is working and updating accordingly with our collisions. All right, so we have to have that update world here and that collisions uh, method here. So let's go ahead and run this program by hitting F5. And there we go. It should pop up with our, you know, our bottle and our cube. And if we, if we go now, it will fail epically. And nothing will happen. Wonk. One sec. Let me go ahead and see what the problem is here. Okay, guys, I believe that I found the error, and it is a noob copy and paste error. So remember when I copy and, and pasted the entity type statement? Well, I forgot to change the actual uh, the type the type thing. So we're applying the entity type of type cube to our bottle here instead of our cube. So let's go ahead and change that uh, to entity type cube comma type cube. Yes, I know. I know it's a new bearer, but nonetheless, let's go ahead and change that. Hit F5, move over here, and check it out. So now we cannot move past this uh, the spot in the cube, and that means that our collisions are in fact working. And yes, I cannot I cannot move uh, move past that spot. Yes, our collisions definitely aren't work working very well, but they are working nonetheless. All right, so. Let's go ahead and look back at our code, and there's one more thing I want to go over in this tutorial. As you can see here, I have an entity radius command enabled for our bottle. And what this entity radius command will do, on the object that is moving, this uh, specifies the actual radius of your collision. So the larger this radius is, the farther, uh, the, farther the bottle has to be the, to actually collide. So once I go, I'll, I'll, I'll demonstrate this by setting the entity radius of our bottle to 0 0.5. And if we press F5 right now, this radius will be larger and it'll be harder to get close to our cube. And as you can see, that does hold true. It is a lot harder to get closer to our cube. Yes. So uh, once again, let's go ahead and change this entity radius command to a 1, meaning that the collision radius of our bottle will now be 1. Uh, so it will be very easy to collide with this uh, cube. And as you can see, I can't even get close to it. That's just how large the collision radius is right now. Uh, and yes, yes, as a matter of fact, that is the collision radius. All right. So uh, I believe that's all I wanted to go over for this tutorial. Uh, remember, guys, don't forget those types. And you have to assign them to your two objects. Set the collisions command and also don't forget that update world keyword after render world and yes don't be a noob and uh, like me and don't <laughs> don't you know don't copy and paste all that much with forgetting to you know change the stuff for every object and also the entity radius command yes it controls uh, how 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 your bottle collides or how your moving object collides the smaller this is the closer it will be able to get to the cube the larger this is the the farther away it will collide with the cube uh, so anyways guys uh, thank you for watching this tutorial and uh, in the next tutorial you might have actually noticed that in this tutorial the collisions definitely have not been perfect uh, for our bottle and our cube as you can see I mean uh, Yes, our collisions are very iffy here because you know we can we can we can actually move on to the cube here, but then you know we can't we can't get to the cube fully here. So if you want to learn how to improve that, that's what we will be going over in the next tutorial. Uh, so you can actually have realistic collisions. All right, thank you guys for watching and peace.